Hi folks, good afternoon. My name is Bruce Kleinberg and I'm an injury attorney here in Sarasota, Bradenton area. Significantly, I'm also a third year medical student and I thought it would be useful to try and use some of the knowledge I've gained in medical school to help people understand some of the injuries that occur in a car crash. Before we go into the injury aspect, it's important to understand the physics of injuries. And I'm not going to go into any great detail because I'm trying to encourage people to go to my website, not discourage them. But I would like at least to talk about some basic physics that is especially important in the number one injury, which is the whiplash injury. And that term, uh, some people use the term hyperflexion, hyperextension of the neck. It's the same thing. I think whiplash is a commonly understood term. And although some lawyers frankly frown on using it and cringe, I find it useful. And if the shoe fits, let's wear it because I think it helps understand what happens. So briefly, I want to talk about the physics. And then in the next uh, video presentation, I want to go into the injury itself. The physics is nice and contained because it really involves one basic law and that law says until you put a force on an object it's not going to move. Put another way an object will remain stationary until a force acts upon it. So I want to use a skull here to demonstrate What this means is that in a car crash case, the back of your body is attached to the seat. When the force comes from a rear end collision, it goes through the car to the back seat and then into your back. Your back, therefore, is going to move forward because of the force has acted upon it. But what about the brain box? The brain box is going to sit still because as of yet no force has acted upon it. Now when the seat brings the headrest into contact with the back of your head, well now there is a force acting upon it so it moves forward. As the head and neck move forward what's happening to the back? Hopefully we all have our seat belts on. The back now has been caught by the seat belt and is, no pun intended, on the way back. It actually sort of sees and passes in the night your head and neck that are moving forward. They then are caught by the seat belt and they go back. So that's the basic movement in a car crash, a rear end car crash. The physics. There's one rule that comes into play. Force equals mass times acceleration. The force is equal to the mass, which is the car, or your back, or your body, whatever we're talking about, times the acceleration. Now, the main variable here is acceleration, because I think it's misunderstood. Acceleration equals the change in velocity over the change in time. And I'm no math major, but the key factor here is this is the denominator, this is the numerator. The bigger this number gets, the smaller acceleration gets. The smaller this number gets, the bigger acceleration gets, velocity maintaining the same. So what does that mean? Let's say you're driving along and you're going 10 miles an hour and you slowly increase to 20. All right, your change in velocity is 10 miles an hour. If that change has occurred over 10 seconds, I mean real slow, the change in time is 10 seconds. The acceleration is one. <laughs> Excuse me, Tunces, <laughs> we're filming baby, okay. <laughs> now, if, however, 
you accelerate to 10 miles an hour, but you do it in two seconds, the acceleration is going to be five, folks. So you can see that it's the change in time that is critical. The quicker you change your, your velocity, the more acceleration and the more force. So that's the basic physics lesson. And the reason it's important in a car crash is that change, that transfer of energy, that change in velocity, let's say you're sitting at a stop sign, you're going zero, you've now been hit by this car, you're going 10. Well, that change in velocity, 10 miles per hour, that occurs, let's say, within a second. So the acceleration is quite great, and therefore the force can be quite great. We'll pick up on that point without the cat next time when we talk about the injuries that occur in a rear-end collision. Thank you very much.